Hi, for this week's Art for All post, we're going to make a seascape using watercolour paints. Now, if you've got your Express Art Group pack, then you'll be able to use the paints and brushes that you have within that. The only additional thing you might need is some kitchen towel if you have any. Now, often when um, you're painting a watercolour landscape, you'll see artists use the big square brushes, um, and that's to help them get a flat, graduated wash over their page. Um, it also helps when you're painting water with a square-ended brush or to get sharp edges. Now, I'm just going to paint this using a standard um, small tipped brush, um, and that's so that you can see it's something you can achieve fairly easily from home with the equipment that you've got. Now, the paper that I'm using I've pre-stretched um, and I don't expect you to do that from home. Um, it will just help with the visuals of the video and mean that the paper doesn't buckle up quite so much as I paint. Um, what I have done though, which you might like to do, is put a masking tape border around your page or you could pencil it in with a ruler. And that's just to give you an edge to work to um, and it helps frame your artwork as you finish. For most of this painting, I'm going to use what's known as a wet on wet technique. And that basically means that we're putting wet paint on top of an already wet paper surface. And in this case, I'm going to use water that's clean. So you'll just see here that I'm just brushing over the top half of my painting backwards and forwards with clean water. Now I don't want to saturate the paper, um, I don't want it to pull on top, I just want it to soak in a little bit so you get a damp surface texture. I'm using the tubes of watercolour paint for this, but don't worry um, if you've got the paints that come in a pack, they'll work um, exactly the same. You might just have to mix them up a little bit on the palette just to make the, the paint go further. So the paint colour that I'm using for the sky is an ultramarine blue. I'm then just going to mix a drop of water in with the paint. Now you can see in the, on the right hand side just how little paint I've actually got in the palette. Um, and I'm not going to use all of that. So I just need a drop of water and I'm just going to mix it up so it's a fluid consistency. And then I paint over the top of where I've just put my clean water on the page. I'm going to try actually and leave some areas where there's less paint so some just stop almost blank um, and just go down. So don't go onto the bottom half of the page, just stick to where you put the water. Um, and as you do that, you'll see that the water starts to run a little bit in it and it makes patterns um, as you go. And then going to move down towards your horizon line, so the bottom of the sky and where it starts to meet your um, land and sea, um, which um, we're going to paint in in a moment. And I'm going to take a paintbrush that's just got water on it again, that's clean. And I'm just going to go over that line and I'm just going to blend it down so it almost disappears. So what I don't want at this stage is a solid edge. I'm then going to take a piece of paper towel or anything like that. And I'm going to actually going to remove some of the paint from the surface. So I'm taking it back to that white area. And so I'm imagining that this first um, half of your painting is the sky. And I want to give the impression that there's some clouds within that skyline. So I'm just removing a few areas. I don't want to create circles or anything that looks too much like a solid form. I want it to stop quite natural. So I'm just going to remove it away in a couple of areas. So once you've done that, you can go back to your blue paint and kind of pick out some of the edges of those clouds and make them a little bit darker. Um, you could always put some more water on your page if you want it to run a little bit more and just um, yeah work around putting some character into the sky for a moment. We're not going to introduce any other colours at this stage, so just stick to the one paint. So the colour paint that I'm using for the beach, if you want to use the same, is a cadmium yellow. So with the beach, as I'm looking at this, I'm going to treat it as though it fills the bottom left hand um, portion of the page. I'm going to create a triangle so it's bigger on the left hand side and then it fades off into the corner. The technique that I'm using for the beach is exactly the same. So you just need to clean your water pot and put some of this clean water on the bottom left hand section of your painting. I'm then going to mix quite a lot of water in with my yellow paints because the danger with the yellow is that you go too bright too soon and I want to keep that control over it. So I'm going to keep it quite a light colour to start with and just paint over the top and again watch it diffuse into the water. So 
So again, you can use your um, paper towel just to remove any excess paint and also use a clean paintbrush to soften the edges and fade them out so that we haven't got any harsh lines. Um, and this is particularly important along the shoreline um, because we're going to leave a bit of white there so it feels like it's gradually going out to the sea. The last major section that we need to put in is your cliff face, so your land. Um, and to do this, I'm not going to use the green that you've got in your pack. I'm going to mix the blue and yellow together that you've already got on your palette. And that should help balance the picture out a little bit so that the green doesn't feel too bright. So I'm just going to take some water and mix a tiny amount of the blue and yellow in a separate section of your palette to make green. And then I'm going to apply this in the same way. So I'm using quite a fluid um, paint and I'm going to put this so it fades away um, in between the sky and the beach and creates the effect of a, a bay shape, really. It is really important again here that you use that clean brush and you use that to fade the paint out into the distance and again along that shoreline and that will help give a sense of depth to it and make it feel a little bit more realistic. Um, you'll notice as I painted the green, and the way all of this paint's gone on, where it's mixed with the water, you've got the effect of different tones already. So you've got some darker greens and lighter greens appearing. So you should be able to use that to help guide you as to where to put the water. So whilst I've been painting that, um, it's given the rest of the picture a chance to dry a little bit. Um, so you can see that as I start to go back over um, some of the land areas with my green paint again, and this time it feels like a much brighter colour, and that's because I'm painting, putting wet paint on top of dry, so it's sitting on top. Um, and that can help give the impression of trees and bushes in the landscape if you want to do that. And it will help give um, your picture some foreground as well as background and introduce that depth. Um, so I'm just using the exactly the same colours. I might have mixed a little bit of blue into some areas and a little bit more yellow to create, create some different shades. But just um, feel your way around it. Um, I'm not painting pictures, I'm not trying to paint anything directly, it's a very loose style, so it just gives the impression that there's um, a shoreline there. So we're now going to um, put this C in on this right hand side, so hopefully you can already see where that is, is going to sit. And for this I'm using a slightly lighter blue, so it's a cerulean blue. Um, and I'm, I'm going to mix occasionally some of the ultramarine in with it to take the edge off of it so it's not too bright. You can see as I'm applying the paint to this, I'm using horizontal brush marks. So I'm going from right to left or left to right across the page. And it's really important to make sure you leave some white spaces. And that begins to give the impression that there's some waves there. I'm just going to paint back over at the top a little bit and make sure that I'm differentiating the, the line between the sky and the sea so that it does feel like it's a different colour and just making sure I fade that down so the colour should be slightly stronger um, towards the right hand side but making sure like I say you've got that white line around the beach edge. And then you can just fade again if you need to the top of your horizon and where the land meets it in again. So you might need to adjust that a little bit as you go along as you see, can see that I have done. So with your C you can just keep going over it um, and use a smaller brush and maybe start to put in some darker areas to give the impression that there's waves um, starting to appear. And you can also use your paper towel to remove some of the paint if it goes too far. You can see that just along the shoreline I've made it a lighter strip almost um, that gives the impression that there's a wave there um, and you can do that if you want that but it's a, a little bit trickier so it almost doesn't need it, it could be a nice um, calm sea if you prefer. Um, if you do want to put the wave in the white line is really important and making sure it's dark underneath it and on the other side just to give that sense of depth that it's rising up a little bit from the, the surface. Again, while I've been doing that, the green's had a chance to dry a little bit more. Um, so that means this time when I paint back over it, these colours are really going to pop out and start looking like they're in the foreground. I'm just going to work back over that so it had some more blues and yellows. So I'm using slightly less water in the mixture, um, just to give the impression that there's some trees in the foreground. And even then it maybe rolls over into some fields behind it.
You might also like to bring something right into the foreground. So you can see that I've started to add a few um, bits of greenery and I'm just flicking um, the brush marks up so that it feels like it's something that's more uh, floral or leaves on the beach um, to create a bit more interest in that in that foreground. And um, so that does feel like it's slightly more detailed, but you take that as far as you want to. So I'm actually now going to start introducing some red into the picture. Now, I don't know um, if you can see, but I've um, actually mixed a touch of red into the green and blue uh, colour that we've got in our palette. And that makes a brown tone and also makes some greys. And I can use that to add some shadow areas. So just along the beach, so it's not flat, um, but you need to use it very watered down. Um, if you go too far, just get a brush with clean water and, and take it back again. Um, you could also use it to add some like tree chunks and that kind of thing if you want to. And then I've got the bread again. And I've started to put some flowers, there's some specks in the foreground um, on these plants that I'm putting in. Um, but I don't want to create them too bright because I don't want it to overpower what we're doing. It's just a hint of other colours. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do with the red is just um, revisit the sky. Um, so it has dried now, so you can take a clean paintbrush with some more water and um, really water down red and let it run into the edges of some of those clouds. And what it will do is it will create um, a shadow effect on them and where it mixes with the blue paint that's already on the page, it will create like purples and grey tones and um, it'll just feel a little bit um, moodier, a little bit more interesting in the sky and it will bring some of that red colour up as well. As I do that, you'll see I'm taking the colour back a lot with the paper towel and that's just so that it doesn't look too vibrant and overpower the rest of the picture. Um, and you can see I have put a touch um, in the beach just to, to finish it up. I'm just going to finish up by revisiting the sea and bringing in some darker areas. I'm just putting the blue over the top again at the front um, and it will look darker because the underneath layer is dry. Um, I'm also going to bring in some of these reds and purple tones really watered down and really lightly to give a bit of depth to it and help accentuate the horizon line. 